What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Erica, from the Classy Con blog. Gonna do this one quickly, uh, talking about our United States justice system. And sometimes it's just not just, right? No matter what we do, no matter what they tell us, they tell us, you know, if you just follow the rules, everything will be fine. You guys just don't break the law. And I have a family friend who is uh, basically committed a crime in a small town. If you know anything, whether you're in Texas, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, never commit crime in a small town. Because everybody knows everybody and everybody's related. And if one person rocks the boat, then they get blackballed. So in this particular case, uh, this young man is completely blackballed. Uh, kind of railroaded in terms of his sentence. The Supreme Court says, you know, the, the <clears throat> Supreme Court of that particular state says, no, that judge, you're doing too much. Fix the time. The judge barely fixed the time. Now you go back and the, the laws have changed. And the family goes, hey, um, that actually he's, he should be out of jail because that the judge didn't do the right thing. Every lawyer in town is like, I, 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 I get blackballed if I take your case. Found a lawyer, two towns over. I don't give a damn. I'm from big town and I have other clients and they can't blackball me. So she's working on the case. Now, why is this important? Why does this matter? One, we need more minorities in our justice system, period, point blank. And I don't just mean prosecutors, I mean every type of lawyer, every type of paralegal, every type of whatever, right? Um, than actually doing justice. Two, never depend on one client, never depend on one relationship, never depend on one city, never depend on one state, never depend on one contract. Anytime you guys talk to me, my biggest thing I want you to understand is you should draw a, like some type of diagram. I got one in mind, but I'll see if I can work on it for the next video where there's so many leads coming in for your business, especially the way the internet works on the online. And again, even if you're a lawyer, even if you're a teacher, even if you're a private tutor, this still works for you. The world is going digital. A lot of this stuff, you can't hide. You can see these documents. Diamond Dave says a really great thing where he says, I can go online and see the documents. A lot of these little towns, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, if you dig and shake enough, this is how our family knows we were uh, plantation owners and the particular land that we own was a plantation, used to be bigger, now it's smaller. Um, you know, basically Civil War happened and the plantation owner was rescued by a slave, slave married her, and they had children together. That is how th we look like this. From looking Indian to looking like this, okay? This is how we look this way. And so what happens is you want people to understand that all this stuff is online. When I tell people, yeah, our family's so impressed, oh, that's offensive, Erica. How is it? Like, it's a public record. It's a public document. You can find it online. It's not hidden. It's not a secret. And this is how you should be about your business. No one person, no one event, no one straw breaks the camel's back, right? If you can get sales, if you can get leads, if you can get payments, again, um, it uses an example, but I'm careful how I'm using an example. Him 500 used to have a very popular commercial where he would say he was banned off Stripe, PayPal, authorized net. Like he just named like 20 FinTechs he was banned from essentially but he was using this particular merchant service. So this merchant service company, of course, made a lot of money in that conversation. Why am I bringing that up? You never let one thing stop your flow. Then you weren't really about your business anyway. When people tell me this one thing caught me up and it jammed me up and I haven't been right since. And I really go, have you examined your actual goals? Have you re-examined what is your real target of what you're trying to hit? Because sometimes the, the, the target is like, I just want to do this one thing and I go over here or over here, right? So you have to adjust your targets, but you always have to adjust where your leads come from. Someone said, oh, Erica, what if you got kicked all, you kicked all your stuff off YouTube? What you going to do? I've created a mode around my business. What is the mode? There's lots of data points and video testimonials and SEO that show, hey, this person, this person is doing this. This person is doing this. So at any given moment, in the funnel, a person can come in and work with me. At any given moment, they come in, we have a bunch of tax money sales go, oh, okay, cool, they saw that video. We have a bunch of these sales over here, oh, they saw that video. Oh, we have a bunch of middleman and millions of course sales, oh, they saw this video. It's not, it's not a mystery. 
You've probably been seeing these commercials for Middleman to Millions course. What is Middleman to Millions? We're teaching so many people how to have service businesses. The upcoming year, one of the fastest growing businesses you will see are service businesses and digital businesses. Why is that? Because so many things need repairs, need maintenance, and guess what? We have a shortage of men and also women who can do things. Listen, I'm not the best with a hammer, but I know I can gather a crew of people to get things done, and that's what I've done with two of my service businesses. And that's what I'll be teaching if you check us out in the Middleman and Millions course. And look forward to us on the road with Digital Liberty Tour 2024. Scroll Edgar Williams. I've been telling it for years, but I want you to understand, if you're in some small town and you're like, Erica, I'm trying to get a job, I'm trying to break through, I'm having a hard time, get on this damn computer i didn't say get on a podcast that's not what i said i said get on this computer and find customer service jobs you can do remotely which are going to pay you 22 to 25 dollars an hour uh, i want you to find other opportunities to get yourself certifications for free as many free ones you got go on hubspot there's about 30 free ones um go on salesforce go on trailhead get into those systems because let's be very clear i'm pushing very hard on here about tech about blue collar services and about content creation. Why? Because those are three fields we can get into relatively cheap and have high return value. Now the high is gonna be information and content. It can just go radically lopsided up. But I also don't want you to miss out on tech and blue collar because right now they're in a point where uh, there's a South Park video, comical, where the man is making a killing because young people don't know how to fix anything. And if you're the one 22 year old or 20 year old that knows how to do plumbing, you're rich. If you're the one guy who's 19 to 21 and you're willing to go on a roof, you're willing to plumb, you're willing to uh, do welding, you're willing to learn something, you'll be rich. It's just that simple because it's such a rare thing for that generation. All right. And, and this lady joked the other day and said, everybody wants to be a YouTuber and a podcaster. I'm like, that's the young people you see in. You need to get around young people and encourage them. You better get this blue collar money. You better go get this tech money. Another reason I, I push so hard for people to be in tech is they're writing this code without you. When you read these articles, when you read these stories about San Francisco and Miami, and, and you're like, who can afford a $6,000 a month apartment? The people writing those articles, the people in those circles, the people that went to Harvard, the people that went to Yale, the people that went to, the, went to these tech jobs, the people that are all their friends are tech and so they don't see anything below them financially they don't like oh people are struggling how it's like this horse blinders they got their horse blinders on to go straight forward and this is the problem when you depend on one source when you depend on one little small town now if you're gonna be in a small town be the big fish in that small town but ultimately if you pick me up and shake me off and drop me in houston tomorrow with nothing to my name i will still get around and i still make money because i don't depend on one source i just don't and i don't want you to either uh, there's too many opportunities out here for you to grow. Again, I <laughs> I had this guy, uh, I was watching his channel, and they were like, if you got your last $5,000, what would you do? And this guy named off like 20 things. And I know people in the audience probably like, what the hell? But but truly, if you're on your last $500 to $5,000, you're okay, baby. I mean, from stocks to e-commerce to creating supplements you can put on Amazon to starting a service business tomorrow that puts money in your pocket, you're good to go. Right? Don't get blackballed by being limited, by thinking one person, I always tell people this, if you have one client that could leave your business and it destroy your business, you don't have a business. You're working for that one client, you have a job. Okay, you should have a constant source of clients coming in, leads coming in, phone conversations. Again, the 110-2 method, it works because it works. Um, if you ask me how, to, how do I build myself back up in 90 days if I lost everything, I could go through that video very quickly just depends all right you know people just have to want it i guess um but this is something i want you to understand what's happening in our country is people are depending on the coal mine in a small town when you should have been got on the computer buddy you should have been figured out something to do um you see all these people moving from california oregon you know this dude's leaving just um jeff becky becky I'm messing his name up. He left from Maui, Maui, Hawaii, which he's been there 10 years, and is moving to Franklin, Tennessee. He's going to build a house. They're going to have a farm, all this stuff. And so when I see these things, I always go, these people aren't depending on one source. They're not depending on being in this small town, and, and my rent has to say 500 If it gets out of $500, I don't know what I'm going to do. You should be brainstorming all day the actual assets you have 
And when I mean assets, I don't just mean money. I mean, what kind of skills and talent do you have that you could kick up and start again? Don't get blackballed. I'll definitely keep you posted on the update on the justice for that young person that we know. Uh, hopefully they'll be getting some freedom here very quickly, very shortly. Uh, but it's, it's wasted time and money and resources from that family trying to get this person free because they're in a small town. Uh, and the crime was committed in the small town. So this is something they joke, even here in Austin, Texas, we're Travis County, Williamson County, which is quite big. They say if it's five to 10 in Austin, it's uh, in Travis County, it's 10 to 20 in Williamson County. And that's an incentive for you not to commit crime in their county. So they're gonna bend the law and they're gonna beat you with paperwork. And I try to say this in the nicest way possible. Many of y'all need to just sit down and read paperwork all day because you would figure out like, well, damn, I shouldn't do A, B, and C. Listen, I saw a, a two black guys riding in a car, tail light, bro tail light on the left-hand side broken, Indiana plates, drinking in the car, smoking in the car, riding down the road. They were in Austin. I said, but if you drive up towards Round Rock, baby, y'all going to jail, jail. <laughs> y'all going to jail, jail. And a lot of people just don't, uh, you know, for whatever reason, they don't, I don't know what will it make them drive around like that when they could just go to their house and sit in the backyard or go to their patio at their apartment. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, justice sometimes is just for us. They're just making these laws for against us. So I, I want you to not be discouraged in the video I made, but, but just to hear some thoughts uh, on never depending on one source and really being creative. And I'll do some more videos in this series on this. So this is your girl Erica from Classic On Blog. I hope to see you in Atlanta, May 4th and 5th for the Digital Liberty Tour. Uh, you already know we're gonna have some hitters there. Financially Free D, the Acre Boys. You can always hit their links below in the description to get access to their courses. And uh, this is your girl Erica from the Classic On Blog. What's up May 5th and 6th? Join me in Atlanta for the Digital Liberty Tour. We have a collection of good hosts and speakers coming through. I'm so excited. Uh, we're going to be teaching you how to power up from your phone to have 24-7 income coming in. How? Affiliate marketing. Uh, we're going to teach you about a lot of content creation. Also how to create YouTube and Facebook ads and Google ads. Listen, we also are going to have credit specialists there. We're also going to have, because funding is going to be so very vital and important in 2024, we're also going to have the Acre Boys fly down from New York to teach you about the importance of buying land online, the digital space where you don't have to leave your home. Again, the power of the liberty, the liberty comes from being able to do this, any of this stuff on your phone. Also, we'll have a service business specialist in there helping you show how they've grown their business online by using the tools that online prefers. Uh, listen, we don't want you to leave this, this event without being able to master Facebook ads, YouTube ads, Google ads, or what uh, type of stream of income you'd like to desire. There's going to be workbooks included, and you know we're going to eat tacos on Cinco de Mayo. So be there or be square. The link's in the bio. We're going to be at a beautiful Kipton Shane Hotel. Fancy. You're going to love it. This is your girl, Erica, Classic On Blog. See you guys there.